Lovey. Oh, what a ball, the ball moving away. Oh, he does that so cleverly, doesn't he? He gives an off-spin indication and comes and gives an off-spin indication and comes and bowls along with the seam. Fabulous opening delivery. Yeah, really disguising the batsman beautifully. Just see that curve uh, from Mohamed Nabi. Absolutely brilliant, like uh, just an outswing bowler. Was trying to <laughs> play on the onside. Guessed it first runs up, but what a delivery there to start with. Once again, right at the button there. You know, the thing about Mohamed Nabi, Echaro, is he always tries to lead from the front. You know, at times as a player, you perform, you don't perform. But he's always, you know, that intent is there that I want to do the best for my side. As a captain, has got to lead from the front. We saw that the way he batted today, promoted himself up the order before Bopara. Tendes Kate did a good job with the bat. He's always, you know, that kind of leader, Mohamed Nabi. Oh, thank you, Prasad, on his feet. What's he thinking? Penny for his thoughts. Fletcher, very watchful. Nabi consistently bowling those off. Uh, you know, those <laughs> swingers of his. Fletcher is smarter than that. Three balls in the same area. He patted back. The first, of course, he missed. And then fourth, he said, if it's going to be the same thing, I'm going to be ready for it. It's a fog. Saluriza. Yeah, you're right. I think uh, this time he read it very well. Just see, uh, just making room for himself, carving it away. Plays uh, really nicely along the carpet. And that's... Uh, the first uh, for four, Drop. that's played well, straight to the field at this time. What a tussle in the in between at the moment. Yeah, very disappointed, Andre Flesher, that he couldn't pierce the field the second time around. He'd done all the right things, caught the middle of the bat as well, straight to the fielder. Only four off this, jumps out and he'll uh, settle for a single. So, a very useful over by Mohamed Dabi. Starts out once again. The captain, of course, will know that it's very difficult to chase 236. Five for nine after one. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं पॉप का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से दिल चुरा लो So the first semi-final in progress, the Leopards, uh, well, they have a daunting task in front of them. Not going to be easy for them. Uh, five runs of the first over. They need a, such a good start here. That's going to be uh, imperative for them. If they have to uh, really get uh, near to that score, it's going to be Aftab Alam from uh, the Sharjah club end. One man who was very impressive recently in the Asia Cup. Eight wickets for him so far in the uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. Two for 14 is best. The fine leg... Uh, the third man fielder inside the circle. Got to be very careful uh, with those two fielders inside the circle with his line here to start with. Yeah, after Balam, uh, Brian Murgatroyd reminds us, uh, did mention something about a, a side niggle, a side strain, uh, but he seems to be all right now with bail out of that first delivery. But uh, if he's not 100%, then uh, maybe Fletcher can uh, begin positively right here. So. Oh, through the gap on the offside. Two full. Had the width. And Fletcher spotted it quickly enough. Fog. Saluriza. Off the first delivery. After Balam. Watch out. What a shot. That's cracking. Powering on the offside. Much fuller in length this time. Aftab. Uh, just making room for himself. Just taking his uh, left foot away. Making room and uh, playing it very nicely. It's going to be a test here for the Seamers. There is a long on. Oh, inside edge. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> Andre Fletcher will take it. After not too pleased. That must have been just a whisker away from the stumps. Yeah, you're right. It was uh, perilously close to the leg stump because uh, not we intended to play. Inside edge. Uh, just see once again, just shuffling. His trigger movement on the all stump. Uh, inside edge. Uh, but as they say, luck favors the brave. He's been brave so far. He's been taking his chances. And getting uh, that boundary as well, that fork four, whatever, you know, runs may come in whatever direction. They need runs on the board. After Balam bringing the ball in, Andre Fletcher will be warned. Oh, slow bouncer, well bowled. Fletcher completely flummoxed. Yeah, you're right. He was uh, fox on that occasion. Can have any clue about that uh, slow delivery. That's exactly what he got to do. Good line as well from Aftab. Good comeback from him. After those uh, two fours, uh, 
see uh, was he off cut up playing early on that one <laughs> that's uh, the thing exactly what you got to try so what's the follow-up I said there's a long on and a deep square leg does he go in the air on this one Fletcher oh, and a sharp bouncer to follow up this is good stuff by Aftab four of the first delivery and three very good deliveries thereafter of course went for a boundary in the second as well that was lucky yeah Anil Chaudhary just in indicating that uh, one for the over exactly what he told the uh, umpire at the bowlers in was uh, ducking underneath on the occasion two balls left uh, telling his partner as well the boundary so far in this over from Aftab Oh, drifting down leg after I'm happy to half appeal there but I sense uh, Andre Fletcher will regret the fact that he missed out not too many fielders in the leg side so of course just one two inside the circle and that might well have uh, gone for another Sadhu Reza yeah, just shuffles uh, across uh, his trigger movement just comes up onto the uh, middle stump trying to play it on the on side he's got two boundary riders one at long gone one a deep square leg good comeback by him after those two fours early on oh well finished so boundaries of the first two and four dot balls to follow 13 for none after two white shirts kitne plain or simple fog scent plain or simple white shirt ko bana de special or fashionable fog scent new fashion wear for men Always enjoyable uh, when you have a high scoring uh, T20 game, and so far we've witnessed that, and especially the first innings. It's going to be uh, once the captain, uh, Mohammad Nabi, uh, decent first over from him. Yeah, happy to come round the wicket to Anton Devsic. And uh, will he now keep uh, bringing it in, or does he spin it away if he can? Ah, a little bit of off spin there, but uh, Devsic spotted that well in time. This is a wonderful battle. Nabi, who'd gone for plenty earlier has been very tight this time around and uh, wonder how Fletcher is going to see this he moves uh, to over the wicket quickly Nabi yeah that's the thing with him you know he really bowls uh, well against uh, the left handers the right handers where is his space oh good delivery and striking there the ball just curving away poor shot selection he was looking good Fletcher but deceived by Mohamed Nabi just mentioned about him that's a big wicket as well that's just so clever and uh, how many times have I said that his length is just immaculate once again with the seam moving away off stump can't blame uh, Fletcher for trying what he did he got away with it the last time around the last over and I'm sure he knew it was moving away but uh, it just sped through and that's a big loss for the Nangarhar Leopards because uh, this man could have taken it away a bit at least got them off to a good start but wasn't to be 13 from 13 first wicket down 14 on the board Sasural Genda Pool इस मोबाइल से आप लोगों से दूर हो जाते हैं और इस मोबाइल से लोग आपके पास आ जाते हैं फॉग का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से नजदीकियां बढ़ा लो सो एट नंबर थ्री for uh, the Ngar Leopards is uh, Johnson Charles, another man who can really uh, tong the ball, get some runs up. Has played well, very nicely in the gap, by signal gap, chase for the fielder, but the ball will win the race. So starting off in great fashion here, a fog four for him to start with. Yeah, for a change, Mohamed Nabi getting his length wrong, just a little too short, and Johnson Charles had plenty of time and width as well. So. A rare loose delivery by Mohammed Nabi, but it allows Johnson Charles to find the middle of the bat, get off with a four, similar ball, yeah. and up in the air, it should be taken. Johnson Charles gone second ball. It was there to be hit. He just didn't connect it, didn't find the timing. And he'll have to now walk back to the pavilion with a Nangarar Leopards chase in tatters. What a day the Bulk Legends captain is having. Batted really well, that came here from him. 
then picking up two wickets uh, so far in this over. Cutting it uh, but straight into the hands of the field. Uh, Mundro uh, doing the race. Uh, good neat catch by him. And two wickets uh, in this over. The early uh, inroads uh, that he wanted. Charles really disappointed. Out for four. Eight in for two. Afghanistan cricket, the way it's uh, risen, the way of this uh, Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League has been conducted, and some fantastic games at this uh, big semi final as well out here. Yeah, I think that was only intend to be, intended to be proud of Afghanistan, and that we are, and certainly their cricket as well. Plenty of ta talent, and uh, this man is leading from the front now, Mohammad Nabi. Uh, further up, no more damage in this over. It's been terrific. Two for ten, there we go. Andre Fletcher moving away and uh, the ball moving just a bit the other side now. Johnson Charles. Well, yes. Unfortunately, it went straight to hand and uh, he had to walk back in the pavilion. So, two wickets for the skipper. And uh, after three, it's 18 for two. Man of the match ko ye milta hai. Lekin isse, is tak banne mein din o lag jate hai. Like an 11 wickets pay, game khatam hote hi, instant cash. 11 wickets app download karo, apni team banao, aur jito instant cash. So what a start here for the uh, bulk legends. Uh, they have uh, done now uh, exactly what they required, picking up early wickets. Abdab Alam, uh, one over, facing those two fours. Then he came back well in that over. But the captain from the other end, uh, Mohammad Nabi doing the trick. A lot of pressure now on Anton Devsic. He really has to uh, get along, uh, get a big score. Chasing uh, 236 means uh, we've got to cash in. in the first six overs utilize the power play. That's going to be important. Well, I think after getting 235 on the board, They'd, uh, in terms of percentages or 0 to 100, they would have thought that 75% of the work is done. 25 was still in doubt. And I think uh, another 12 and a half out of that is uh, now out the window because of this relatively poor start to the chase by Nangarar Leopards. So for me, right now, it's 87.5 to 12.5. But as Alistair Campbell reminded us, of course, stranger things have happened in the game. So come on, Nangarar. One of the issues uh, that uh, the Leopards have had, uh, Charu, throughout the tournament, uh, throughout the league phase, has been the batting because uh, the bowling has been good. They have that balance. They have some good sp spinners in the ranks. Andre Fletcher, of course, uh, missing out today. Started off really well for the few fours. And then uh, his wicket was a very important one. Just trying to uh, cut that one away. Anton uh, missing that one. But uh, yes, uh, the batting hasn't been that consistent. They batted well in the last game because of Fletcher. Getting that uh, start for his side. But you see, uh, you know, after eight matches, uh, even someone like Rehma Shah, who plays uh, for the national side regularly, he's uh, dropped today, uh, playing in the playing 11. Six. Can't find the timing, Anton. They take a quick single. But yeah, it's been a bit of a roller coaster for the Nangarhar Leopards. They started in uh, with a fine win, easy win. And looked good from there. And then, of course, there was that rapid decline with three losses. And all of a sudden, they lost their way completely. And uh, they must be, to an extent, very grateful that they got to the Final Four. That's because the Kandahar Knights couldn't manage win in the last game. And had they won, they would have been to the Final Four. But having gotten there, we should have thought they would have come back with renewed vigor, new thought, new plans. But I will have to say, Ajay, that bulk legends, when they won six out of eight in their league stage, uh, won it for a reason. They are probably a much better outfit, certainly with the bat. That's going to be a wide good take as well behind the stumps. But you know, when the tournament started, uh, we were all uh, discussing uh, the team, 
you know, I just thought Nangahar Leopards, they have a very good combination. The spinners they have, the kind of bowling they have, uh, pen cutting as well, leading for them. Of course, uh, midway through, uh, Andre Russell, uh, he was injured. That was a big blow up for them. But it's all about uh, performing. Uh, and uh, what Balkages have done is, uh, as a team, they have uh, gelled well, looked a very cohesive unit. The momentum has been with them. Yeah, well, I was talking to Venki earlier on, and I said, did you have a settled 11 going into the semi-final? I suppose the only name he could uh, sound a little hesitant about was this young man, um, Ibrahim Zadran, who's in the 11, and he comes at number four, so that's a very important position, as it were. But he's still young, and uh, it's just circumstances have catapulted him into the 11, and it all may be a little too much for him. But yet, maybe with the pressure of uh, trying to get 236, he could just uh, show us a bit of his skill. Doesn't have to continue going big. But he does. And there's a fielder there. Take him easily. Yeah, he was just feeling the pressure. Just feeling the pressure. Really couldn't uh, get off the mark as well. Just struggling up uh, initially. And now the fifth delivery. Uh, gives an easy catch uh, down to a uh, deep square leg. Aftab Alam striking. Just uh, flicking that one straight to the hands uh, of the fielder. Munro having a busy day today. Does pretty well. Accepting that gleefully. He's delighted. Losing the way here. The Leopards. Uh, the third wicket gone. Zadran couldn't do much out without scoring. It's 20 for 3. Sasural Genda Pool. Smell. This mobile is a logo. And this mobile is a logo. It's 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 a logo. So everything going in favor of the legends. They've really done well. Ashmatullah Shahidi walks in, experienced campaigner. 200 runs for him so far in the Afghanistan Premier League. And he's uh, here because of this, uh, just feeling the pressure. Zadran uh, just holding it out uh, in that direction. But he couldn't get going. Uh, four dot deliveries and then uh, losing his wicket. Yeah, I feel a little sorry for him because uh, when you get caught at that point during the power play, it has to be... Uh very, very unfortunate because you could hit it anywhere. It was uh, middle and leg, and that flick normally earns you four, if not six. Unfortunately for him, it went straight to hand. And Colin Monroe, of course, was not going to drop that either. So, uh, not a memorable semi final for young Ibrahim Zadran. But what an over. Very good over from uh, Aftab Alam. Four gone, it's 21 for three. Black shirts, kitane plain or simple. Fox scent, plain or simple black shirt ko banade special or fashionable. Fox scent, new fashion wear for men. Not the kind of start you want when you're chasing 236. The lost three important wickets. Uh, Fletcher, Kundu March, Charles as well. Zadran out without scoring. Really, the bowling has been uh, spot on. Led by Mohamed Nabi, he's been very impressive. Two overs, uh, two wickets. Just conceding 10 runs. A slip in place as well. That's uh, Chris Gale. So trying to build that pressure, and rightly so. Shahidi, the kind of batsman who just takes a bit of time initially. He just uh, come into very good form, Chris Gale, after a slow start of the tournament. Well, Nabi says, I've taken two. So I'm just 10 in my first two overs. Might as well bring myself on for another. Oh, almost had his man. Devsic done in by the lack of pace there. Went in for the big slug sweep and bailed out towards the end. He saw against the right-handers, he was curling the ball away, but now bowling those uh, all-spinners. 
That was uh, perilously close to the off stump. I'd say two and a half millimeters. <laughs> very, very close. They have such lucky. Steps out over the infield and uh, just short of Colin Munro. The ball's following him today. He's got, a, I think, a knock on his shin for that effort. Yeah, but he's done really well in the field. Really well, Colin Munro. Making some good catches. Once again, not timing it. Very lucky for him. Just falling short of him. He is uh, just on the shin there. That can be painful. But he's pretty happy. Yeah, drifting down leg. And uh, they don't even get a single there because Shahidi, uh, there it says, quite not, I'm happy not to take the quick single there. But really, uh, full credit to Mohamed Nabi, the way he's bowling uh, with the new ball. He's done that before. The control he's showing. The variations uh, mixing his trajectory, never giving uh, easy runs. It's been a great start for their side. Well, he came in and blasted a very quick uh, near 50, striking at almost 300, and now he's taking two for 12. Captain, fantastic. Make that three from 12. Mohamed Nabi strikes again. Shahidi went for the big slog sweep, missed completely. And his stumps disturbed back to the pavilion. Well, the captain, Mohamed Nabi, has made a big difference in the game so far. He's bowled beautifully, the third wicket for him, really uh, not a great shot attempted, uh, soft dismissal for Shahidi uh, trying to work the ball on the onside, playing across the line and striking timber once again, Mohamed Nabi. Not a great shot, uh, just keeping a shade low as well. But he's uh, been very impressive. Couldn't do much, uh, Shahidi. Just out for uh, two or five deliveries. He's 23 for four now. अक्सर लोग मेरे बारे में ही कहते हैं कि वीरू किसी की नहीं सुनता गलत कहते हैं मैं अपने दिल की सुनता हूँ आप भी ना अपने दिल की करो वीरू गिरी करो फोन उठाओ और इंडिया का सबसे एक्साइटिंग गेम माय टीम इलेवन डाउनलोड करो अपने दिल की टीम बनाओ और दबा के कमाओ वो माला माला है नमा from Fork Perfume Body Spray Outlast the Party Well these are the lowest power play scores in the tournament thus far the Knights hold the record and it looks as though that record's going to be uh, safe but uh, this effort from Nangahar Leopards isn't far behind exactly the same score as the Knights managed against the Leopards actually but uh, there's still an over left Mervez Ashraf and the Stars with the ball. Call the Bulk Legends in this tournament. Bold! Anton Devsic goes. And if the wheels weren't off for Nangahar Leopards before that delivery, they most assuredly are now. 23 for 5. Alistair Campbell alongside me. Goodness me. All four wheels have fallen off. The engine's falling off. The chassis scraping on the ground. It's just gone pear-shaped for the Nangahar Leopards. And uh, this epitomizes everything, really. Trying to carve it away over the leg side, inside edge. And uh, over goes the off stump. Yeah, jubilation for the bulk legends. They've been right on top from the get-go tonight. Deftich gone for three, 23 for five now. इस मोबाइल को कोई चुरा सकता है और इस मोबाइल से आप किसी का दिल चुरा सकते हैं फॉक का छोटा मोबाइल पैक जब भी चाहो परफ्यूम से दिल चुरा लो both batsmen in the middle now are yet to face a ball. <laughs> and uh, yes, here comes his box. Well, now the most important piece of equipment was missing. Don't worry about the pads and the bat. Worry about that piece of equipment. Even laughing Ben Lachlan saw the funny side of that. 
Gee whiz, it's gone pear shaped here for the Nangaha Leopards, hasn't it? They got an absolute pasting with ball in hand, and now with bat in hand, it's not got any better. I was on with Charu Sharma, and I said, hold on, hold on, wait till Nangaha bat, two sides bat, then we judge how this wicket is, and well, he reckoned they got 50 too much. I reckon 150 too much at this stage. Right, he's nearly ready. He's got <laughs> everything there, I think. He's patted down and uh, made sure that uh, he's nearly ready to go, Ben Cutting. Probably would have been uh, halfway through his dinner there, expecting to sit down and uh, watch a, a nice run chase, a feisty run chase. That's 71. His best score in the tournament came against Bolk. Albeit in a losing cause, as it appears this will be as well. Lowest score of the tournament is 106 by uh, Paktia when they were beaten by Bolk by 89 runs. And that's also the largest margin of victory in the tournament thus far. You'd have to say both those records are severely under threat here. Yeah, it'd be good if uh, Ben Cutting gets going. He can hit a long ball. We know that. We've seen it in the tournament. Just to entertain this crowd a bit here. You don't want them ready to capitulate and uh, go down tamely. This is what happened. There's that inside edge onto the off stump, trying to heave it away on the leg side. And Mirway Sashraf couldn't happen to a nicer bloke. He epitomizes everything that is Afghanistan cricket. And that was his 12th wicket of the tournament as well. Definitely coming under the radar. He's not express pace, just a medium pacer, but very accurate. Good changes of pace and uh, a wholehearted tryout. Remember, he was player of the uh, match in the first match against Nangaha that Bolt played. Four overs, four for 19. He's at it again. Not a lot of banter in that dugout. Well, there we go. Helps it on its way. That should be a boundary. Much needed boundary. He's down the wicket. And Mirway saw him coming. Try to dig it in. But he hasn't got the pace and been cutting able to get it up and over the man at short fine leg. There he is just advancing down the wicket and uh, nice balance and able to just uh, get the bat underneath it and uh, relied more on timing than brute force on that occasion. Oh, that's a nice hit that clears the man. That square leg, Spagiza to end the power play. 33 for five. Ben Cutting, at 71 he got actually earlier in the tournament, was uh, against Paktia. And these are the sorts of shots he played on that occasion. Lovely pick up that. But this is uh, Nangaha's lowest power play score. The previous lowest was uh, 35 for two, also against Bulk. 33 for five chasing 235 case Ahmed what a lovely time to come on as a wrist spinner yep the stuffing's been knocked out of the batting but you've got two batters here that I reckon want to take him on he won't have it all his own way that's smashed into the gap on the leg side too short from case Ahmed and he's back in a flash as Shafi Kula and helps himself to a boundary well, there's only one way to play in these circumstances. The required rate, almost 15 runs per over. There's no point in playing for tomorrow because there is no tomorrow if you lose. Semi-final of this Gulbaha Afghanistan Premier League. You've got to go for broke.
such a bright prospect for Afghanistan cricket, Taysa Ahmed. Such a young man and such good skills already. Ah! That best for him in the tournament of three for 19 actually came against the Leopards. Uh, I reckon he's got all of that. No, oh no, no. I thought he had a, enough on it to get it just over the boundary, but Ryan Tenderskater was standing in the way, and he's not going to drop those. It was another short one from Case Ahmed. On this occasion, though, Shafiqullah not able to take full toll and perishes in the cause. Another one down. Things go from bad to worse for the Leopards. That's the eighth wicket of the tournament for Case Ahmed. He gave it everything he had there, Shafiqullah. But didn't quite middle it. And Ryan Tenderskarter was the right man in the right place at the right time. Shafikullah gone for four. And the Leopards 37 for six. India may important people, cricket team owners, hold their head. So. मैं भी टीम बना रही हूँ 11 विकेट्स पे नाम सनी सुल्तान्स या सनी शो स्टाफर्स सब 11 विकेट्स डॉट कॉम पे टीम बना रहे हैं ये कोई ज्ञान नहीं ज्ञान की कमाई है अजाल मियाजाइ कमिंग इन एट नंबर एट शॉर्टली अ लॉस्ट कॉज नाउ Uh, batting at a runner ball in his 2020 career and they need much more than a runner ball now let me tell you that yeah he tried his best to get on with it Shafikula earlier in the over he managed to put one away and that was uh, in the gap this time straight to the man and that was the first one in the gap and it was fine went for four and then uh, two balls later Hit it straight to Ryan Tenderskater on the boundary. End of seven, 37 for six. Sasural Genda Pool. Smell. This mobile se aap logo se dur ho jate hai. Aur is mobile se log aap ke paas a jate hai. Fog ka chota mobile pack. Jab bhi chaho, perfume se nazdi kiya badha lo. Seven overs gone and six wickets down already. Couldn't be any worse for the Nangahar Leopards. Well, you've heard the expression, it never rains but it pours. And that's exactly what's happening here in Sharjah at the moment. There's some drizzle falling. There have been a few spots of rain in the UAE today. There were a couple of spots down at the test match in Abu Dhabi between Pakistan and Australia and a few spots in Dubai as well here's that last wicket heaved out to uh, deep mid wicket where Tender Scarter took the catch and have a look at this a yeah, little slider I think that he bowled yeah it did uh, hurry on a little bit skidded off the pitch and that uh, created the miss it so just uh, elaborating to the wicket keeper that was my ball Well, we haven't been given the Duckworth Lewis stern sheet up here in the commentary box, but I'm pretty sure, take this as a wild guess, Alistair, that uh, Balk are just ahead at the moment. Marginally. I suppose all that uh, needs to be known by the folks at home is that five overs constitutes a game. So that's done. There's uh, a result in this match, even if we did have to come off, but I don't think it's uh, too heavy to force the players from the field as yet. But it definitely uh, is getting steadier, to be honest, as I say that. 
It is getting steadier, and the umpires are coming together. And I guess as well, they'll be conscious of uh, the pitches with two matches still to play. And indeed, the umpires have now made a decision that we're going to go off the ground. You can see the drizzle against the uh, black backdrop there. It was raining sixes earlier on when the Bolt Legions were at the crease and uh, now actual precipitation here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. As Brian Murgatroyd mentioned, it's been overcast today. There's been some drizzle around uh, the Emirates and it's a uh, halting play here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium. There's the evidence. It started off as a very light drizzle. It is still that, but it's just a little heavier than when it first started. As Alistair Campbell said, though, we've got a match already on our hands with uh, more than five overs bowled in this second innings. What a travesty that would be uh, as far as Bolt were concerned if we didn't have a match, given what they've done in the encounter so far. Fifty-nine for six. They're in reply. It's been a woeful day for the Nangahar Leopards. Bulk legends, high fives all around. They know that uh, they are in the pound seats. They've done enough. They're well on top. But everyone would just like to see the game take its uh, natural course and be concluded. These are the wickets so far. Mohamed Nabi, a little arm ball, does for Andre Fletcher, and that one he got a bit lucky, slashing it straight to cover Johnson Charles. That just sums up the day, really. And this, another flick to the leg side. <laughs> another catch straight to a fielder. Afta Balam, celebration on that occasion. And then uh, Shahidi trying to get on with it. Bold, Devstead as well, trying to heave one away on the leg side, inside edge. And this was uh, the last man to floor. Shafikula trying to heave one away on the leg side, straight to Ryan Tendiskata. And they've uh, just never got in the contest, really, from the get-go. Chris Gale was outstanding up front. Really put them under the pump early on. And uh, 235 for five was always going to be a mammoth task for the Nangahar Leopards. And they've uh, capitulated in the face of uh, chasing a very big target, some disciplined bowling. But you'd have to say some of the shots played as well haven't done them any favours. 13 at run a ball for Fletcher, really. The only contribution of any note. And Ben Cutting cuts out a lone figure, not out on 11. Bowling figures, four bowlers used so far, and everyone's been successful. But Mohamed Nabi, what an effort from him. Three overs, three for 12. Bowling in the power play, and that after uh, 47 with the bat from just 16 deliveries, two fours and five sixes. So pretty special day for the bulk legends uh, captain thus far. Well, we're going to take uh, a break now, hopefully for not too long, and uh, we'll be back when the action resumes. Hello everyone, welcome to another NASCAR U. I'm Jesse Punch. Today we're here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we're gonna be learning about the evolution of the stock car. Look at Red Byron's car behind me, the 1949 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series champion. Looks a little different than the cars you see on the track today. No surprise that we've come an incredibly long way since the start of the sport. So today, let's take a walk through time and learn more about how the shape of the cars have shaped our sport. This is Kevin. He's the director of exhibits here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, and he's going to take us on a walk down Glory Road. 
That's right, here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame, we have this sweeping exhibit that takes us really through the whole history of stock car racing. And one of the great things that we're able to show here is really the different changes in technology and what does it mean to be a stock car in NASCAR competition. And one of the earliest cars we have here is Fireball Roberts 1957 Ford. And what's great is it really shows that the cars in the 1950s that were competing in NASCAR are really straight from the showroom stock. At the most, they took some things off. Maybe they would take off the headlights that there isn't broken glass and different things like that. But for the most part, this is a car that you would go into a dealership and buy. They would add some safety with the roll cage. They would take some things out. But pretty much, this is the type of car that you would buy in 1957. It starts to change a little bit more in the 1960s. And here we have a great example of Richard Petty's 1964 Plymouth. Car manufacturing methodologies change and in order to handle the high speeds of now the super speedways that were being built more and more of the frame of the car which is the part underneath the car had to be custom built and beefed up so although this car looks very stock more and more of it is starting to be purpose built for NASCAR competition. The first thing I notice about both of these is that they're very boxy so I'm anxious to see when the transition is made that they become more aerodynamic. Yes, and what's really interesting is not a lot of folks realize that NASCAR had a huge impact on the cars on the street. So as manufacturers realize that the more aerodynamic and the more horsepower that they had under the hood, the better they could do in NASCAR, they started to incorporate that into their street cars in order to make them legal for NASCAR competition. So you were talking earlier about the body shapes and when do they go really from the boxy to the more aerodynamic shapes that really help improve performance. Well, a great example of really an early iteration of that is this number six Dodge Charger uh, that David Pearson drove and was built by Cotton Owens. And the interesting thing about this is you notice the roof line really has this long sloped back. And in car manufacture, we call that a fast back. And the interesting thing is that Dodge Chargers before this had a very traditional straight back. But Dodge realized by having this, the car would go faster because it's more aerodynamic. And they wanted to use this body shape for NASCAR competition, so they had to make the same body available for the public. So again, in order for the car to be available for racing, it had to be sold to the public. So the NASCAR competition need really influenced the designers. So this design, while it looks great, is really a function of NASCAR performance just as much as it is style. And the other interesting thing about this car is that to improve handling further, it's one of the first cars that has a spoiler on it. I didn't realize how much not only the manufacturers have an impact on the sport, but that the sport has an impact in turn on the manufacturers. That's right, we're all seeking performance on the NASCAR racetracks, and in order for the manufacturers to keep up with each other, they change the design, some of it's in the engine, and some of it's in the body, and those two things come together to really create a great street package and a great competition package. That's neat, I'm excited to see where we went from here. Let's go take a look. All right. So as we've seen in the early days of NASCAR, the race cars were really street cars that were modified with performance engine parts or stronger chassis to make them viable for NASCAR competition. As the sport progresses, the need for speed gets higher, the need for safety gets higher, and all these different things come together. So the cars start to evolve into more purpose-built race cars rather than street cars that have been modified for performance. Now these are starting to look a little the cars that I'm used to seeing today. That's right. One of the more obvious things that you see is the heavy branding on the car. So sponsorship has played a part from the beginning, but really you see as the sport grew in popularity, so did the desire for advertisers put their mark on race cars. So they start to look more and more like the cars that we see today. From a technology standpoint, the interesting thing, this is a 1989 Ford. It was prepared by the Wood Brothers excellent competition, and just as importantly, outstanding safety. And how is this combination similar to the way that the manufacturers and the teams work together in today's era of stock cars? That's right, so the cars that we see on the track in 2018 are a design that's agreed upon by the manufacturer, NASCAR, and the teams. And what they wanna do is go back to sort of this era, to say the car needs to look 
more like the car that people drive and buy from the showroom. Although the body isn't a car that you would get off the manufacturer floor, it still retains the essence of being a stock car. Before we get to that final era though, we're going to see sort of the last of the cars that look nothing like a street car in our pure performance machine. So let's go take a look at that. All right, let's check it out. All right. So you mentioned before the relationship between the manufacturers and the teams and NASCAR, and this is representative of the cars that we really see out on the track today. And you can really see that uh, at the time now we're running a Camaro, but uh, in this year we were running a Chevy SS, and you can really see the relationship to make sure that the car, although it's a competition-built machine, uh, it really represents the Chevy SS that was out on the street. A couple of years prior to that, we sort of had the furthest extreme that NASCAR has gotten from a pure street car. Uh, we have the number 24 of Jeff Gordon. This one is from 2005, and at this time, really the teams were hand-building these cars to be pure purpose-driven competition machines, and they were spending a lot of time in the wind tunnel, and they were even twisting the bodies to make sure that the aerodynamic flow was really just right. So they're really interesting cars. They performed well, um, but they didn't look exactly like the car that they were trying to represent. So the current car that we have is really a return back to that hybrid of a stock-looking car with a purpose-built body and chassis. Given what some of these cars can do, it's probably a good thing they don't have similar models on the streets, right? That's right, right. Safer for everybody, including me, involved. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Kevin, I can't thank you enough for taking us on this walk down Glory Road. I have learned so much about the evolution of the stock car. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. Well, that's all for this NASCAR U. I'm Jesse Punch. Thanks for watching. We're chatting through the action of last weekend in Indianapolis before the drivers take a gamble in Las Vegas. Oh, and Daniel Hemrick is here to teach us a thing or two. This is the Pace Lab. It's time. The 2018 playoffs are here. Kicking things off with a showdown in the desert, drivers come to play with a winning mentality. But with a championship on the line, who is willing to risk it all and who will fold under pressure? Welcome to the Pace Lab. I'm Jesse Punch. It is Finally here, the moment that we have been waiting for since the start of the season, the playoffs have begun. Well, getting ready to begin this weekend at Las Vegas, and we have Daniel Hemrick joining us a little later on in the studio to teach us a thing or two about what it's like to race at Vegas. But first, let's check out what happened in some of NASCAR's other series last week. The ARCA series was in action at DuCoin State Fairgrounds. Logan Seavey led the final 35 laps for the win. Just his second ARCA race that he's run this season. In the Wheel of Modified Tour, Justin Bond Sr. led 67 laps at Riverhead Raceway. Seven wins now this season for Bond Sr. Seven wins. That is unreal. And in the Penty series in Quebec, Marc-Antoine Camerand earned the win at St. Eustache, his first Pinty's win of his career. And in Puebla, Ruben Rovelo earned the win in the Peak Mexico Series. In Indianapolis this weekend, it may have been all about the rain, but come Monday, it was all about the competition. Kyle Busch started things off on the pole, but lap 42 brake issues for the 78 car of Martin Truex Jr gives him trouble taking him out of the race, ending the day early. And under caution, Clint Boyer gained that lead spot. Boyer goes on to take stage one. Lap 59, more brake failure on the track. This time, it's Bubba Wallace in the 43 car. He manages to gain some control, but is hit by the 51 of David Starr. Both drivers out for the remainder of the day. Just three to go in stage two. Some pit strategy on the other driver's end put Matt Kenseth in the lead, and he is the stage two winner. On a late race restart, Brad Kislowski takes over the lead spot, and he leads the final two laps for the win. Second win for Kislowski this season, two weeks in a row, he's seen victory lane. Kozlowski giving Pinsky their first cup win at Indy. 
If you watched that cup race, you may have noticed J.J. Yaley's paint scheme, a Smokey and the Bandit paint scheme, a tribute to the late Burt Reynolds, who passed away just last week. Reynolds was an American actor best known for his roles in Smokey and the Bandit and the NASCAR-themed movie Stroker Ace. But many don't know that his connection to NASCAR goes beyond the acting. Reynolds co-owned a Cup Series team from 1981 to 1989. The team earned nine wins with driver Harry Gant. Burt Reynolds was 82 years old. In some other NASCAR-related news, Jamie McMurray will not be returning to Chip Ganassi Racing in a full-time role next season. Ganassi has offered McMurray a ride for the 2019 Daytona 500 and offered a leadership role within the organization moving forward. McMurray has seven career victories, but did not qualify for this year's cup playoffs. He has yet to comment on the decision. The NASCAR Xfinity Series also took the track on Monday for a 100 lap showdown at Indy. Justin Allgaier got off to a hot start, leading the first 11 laps. But at the end of stage one, it was John Hunter Nemechek who came out on top. Lap 38, Daniel Hemrick stole the lead from Tyler Reddick, and he goes on to win stage two. Trouble for Ryan Priest in the 18 on the backstretch brings out the late race caution. Allgaier grabbed the lead immediately on the restart, and he led the final 17 laps to take the checkered flag at Indy. Five wins now for Allgaier in the 17. Just one race away from the start of the playoffs, Justin Allgaier could be your regular season champion, but we'll have to find out next week. With me this week is the driver of the number 21 Chevy for Richard Childress Racing, Daniel Hemrick. Daniel, welcome to the Pace Lab. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule. I know you're just getting back from uh, Indianapolis. Yeah, it's uh, a little later than planned with all the rain and stuff we had, but um, you know we had a good run out there and got back, and now it's time to prepare for Vegas. Yeah, you guys had a pretty good run. You finished fifth, led uh, the last 25 laps, and took stage two. Talk to me about that race. Yeah, it was uh, kind of an up and down. You know, we had good track position to start. I felt like our race car had a lot of speed early. I had a really hard time as the racetrack changed of keeping my car in good positions. I was really losing traffic. And um, luckily, my crew chief, Danny Stockman, worked some strategy and got it to where we could get out front. And out front, our Southwest Chevy had a ton of speed and, and it allowed us to lead a bunch of laps and win stage two, which is big to pick up that playoff point as close to the playoffs as we are and thought we were in a good position to hopefully try to capitalize on a win and do it at one of the most historic racetracks on the circuit and 